Good morning. My name is Mrs. Christiana Iwanugo. I'm here to present the topic Developing Multimedia Based Supplementary Teaching Materials. All right, supplementary based multimedia teaching materials are those materials added to enrich teaching in every subject. They engage students in multi-dimensional learning and build students' ability to apply their knowledge. These materials make the lessons concrete, tangible, practical, and are usually more engaging to students because they are vehicles for supporting students' learning. Most of the times, when we hear multimedia, we begin to think about computers, but multimedia actually cuts across the use of computers. It involves both the text, the videos, the, the, the audios, and the visuals. These are the things that enable the teacher's lesson to be more interesting, prevent the students from getting bored in the class, and also making the students to be very, very interested in learning. We have some examples of multimedia-based supplementary materials. For example, we have, these are flashcards. This is showing a cup, man, chair, this one is showing map of Nigeria. We have prints like this, this one that is showing prostitutes. That is when someone wants to teach a topic like HIV AIDS. We have another print showing drug abuse victims. We have another one showing action verbs. We have another one showing this is a vocabulary card. So we, we have all these. These are the things that make teaching and learning very interesting. Now, some of these materials are developed by the teacher. Some of them can be downloaded from the internet. For example, if it's a video that the teacher wants to use as a supplementary, if it's a textbook, the teacher can get the textbook or ask the students to get the textbook from a library to come to classroom with, so as to make the lesson very interesting. Now, to develop multimedia-based supplementary teaching materials, the teacher needs to do the following. First of all, the teacher needs to consider the learner's age and cognitive stage. A teacher that is teaching a child or children in primary school is not supposed to take a supplementary material that is beyond their cognitive stage. The teacher is going to consider the learners, their age, what they can understand at that particular age or stage of learning. Secondly, the teacher needs to have in-depth knowledge of the content so as to be able to select the materials that will be very suitable, the materials that will fit the content that he or she wants to teach the students. The teacher should also know where to introduce the supplementary materials to prevent it from being a distraction to the students, especially if it's something like a game. Another thing is that the teacher should be creative enough to find out the interesting materials 
the materials that will bring out the what exactly that the teacher wants to pack across to the students, the material that will be able to concretize the topic in the way that the students will be able to understand. Another one is that the teacher can make researches. The teacher should not just sit down and bring some materials that may be boring to the children. The teacher can make researches, go to places, download materials, browse the internet. If it means to purchase, you can purchase some materials in order to make it very interesting. Another is that the teacher should consider the learner's interest. In this case, a kind of needs analysis may be conducted. Now, what I mean by needs analysis is that the teacher will find out what exactly this learners want to know. What does the learner need? What stage of learning is this learner at? And what do I need to use in order to impact knowledge in this learner? That is needs analysis. For example, if a child is having problem of pronunciation, reading of letters, when the teacher identifies that through needs analysis, the teacher will know how to teach the learner. We know the approach to use. We also know the pace to use and the, the best supplementary materials to adopt while teaching such a learner. Now, materials like we have some materials that the teacher needs in order to develop these supplementary teaching materials. We need some items. For example, you want to teach something and you need to show a video, you can get a CD plate. We can develop some of these supplementary materials. These are highlighters or inks. We can refer them to use books like dictionary. If the teacher is teaching English studies, we have markers, we have color pens, we have sticks that students can be asked to use and construct certain supplementary materials themselves. We also have a cutter that they can, be, they can use it and the teacher will guide them to prevent them from getting injured. Now we have some materials like, this is a puzzle, the teacher can use this kind of material in a classroom as a supplementary material. The teacher can develop this kind of puzzle by him or herself. It can also be downloaded from the internet and printed out. Some of these puzzles may be in the textbooks, but there is no topic that will say you should teach a puzzle. But when you are teaching them vocabulary, you can refer them to that page and use that puzzle as a supplementary teaching material. Methods and development. Now, these materials, first of all, a teacher can engage the students to develop some of these materials themselves. Students get excited more when they are the ones to produce what they will use to learn. For example, a basic technology teacher can ask the students to make certain things using this kind of items, giving them this kind of things to use and the teacher must be there to supervise them and make sure that the students are making what he wants them to make. And also make sure that the class is participatory, every student is engaged, every student is participating, the teacher can engage them by grouping. Now, methods, when the teacher has successfully developed multimedia-based supplementary materials. The teacher can make the class, can adopt a learner-centered method. For example, like brainstorming, the teacher can ask the students, okay, can you go to the puzzle on the board and then can you trace some words from the puzzle? And when the teacher asks the students to trace the words, the students will, will crack their brain, they will brainstorm to find out the words. As they are tracing the words, they will be sure that those words are correct. So when they are doing that, what they are doing is a brainstorming. 
they think about it. For example, in this place, we have water. When a student is able to find out that there is a word like water on this line, the student has succeeded in what we call brainstorming. We also have dramatization. A teacher can use the supplementary drama to teach the students. When a teacher is teaching some topics, you group the students to dramatize what you're teaching to enable them understand some of those topics are very abstract, but when the students are grouped into smaller groups, they will be able to understand by playing some roles, they will understand what that topic is there all about. Take for instance, these are prostitutes, and then th these are some of the consequences of prostituting. When the children are acting this, with the teacher's supervision, the students will understand that prostitutes may go down becoming irresponsible. They may go down with some diseases like HIV AIDS. So when the teacher has shown such topics through dramatization, it becomes clearer to the students and they tend to return more when such topics are dramatized. Another learner-centered method is a discussion. When teacher is teaching, the teacher should not take over the class alone, should not be domineering. The teacher should give room for, to the students to express themselves by asking them some questions, some questions that will make them to think, to discuss, to bring out their own answers, and the teacher will make it better. Also, we have some learner-centered methods that can also encourage students like field trip, projects. You can display some items and ask the students to construct something and come to school with it. And then when they bring such things, they can be used as supplementary teaching materials. For example, the students can be engaged in critical thinking Students can be asked to suggest something that can be done. You can ask the students, hey, hello students, what can we produce from these sticks? What can we make with these highlighters? What can we make with these items? And the students will come up with their ideas. They will come up with their innovative ideas. And as a teacher, you amend their ideas and bring out the best out of it. Teaching methods that encourage the use of supplementary materials will enhance learner participation and make the classroom interactive and lively. So every teacher needs to adopt supplementary teaching materials. They are very important. If a teacher really wants his or her class to be very interesting, for the students not to be bored, if a teacher wants the students to be actively participating in the class, supplementary teaching materials are very important. Thank you.